Awesome demo, Zhang. So how about we spend some time discussing the various options of you know, configuring um, all these pieces together and, and kind of dive deep a little bit and understand the different moving parts in terms of the, the technologies in use and what is actually making this data flow from Salesforce to AWS and back from AWS to Salesforce possible. Can sure. you talk a little bit about those things? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's get under the covers here. Um, so what Salesforce provides is uh, they provide a, a messaging framework called platform events. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they recommend uh, if you want to do anything near real time. And so what, what we would recommend is leverage that. And platform events essentially will put events onto a bus and um, you just need a way to be able to read off of that bus. Mm -hmm. And, and you, could, you can implement that in any type of compute that you want, whether that be directly on EC2, or whether that be on Fargate, or uh, EKS, or ECS, but uh, Lambda is also a great option. Serverless, why not, right? Exactly. You don't have to manage any of your servers, just write, write code. And so Lambda is uh, listening for a platform event, mm -hmm. and when that platform event arrives, it'll go ahead and grab that platform event, and write it to an SNS queue. And the reason why I recommend doing this is because um, you want to keep your Lambda functions as minimal as possible, right? just as a best practice. That's right. You want to scope them down so that one Lambda function is really doing one thing. A purpose built. Yes, yes. And SNS also provides uh, a buffer layer, right? So that you can this, this solution will scale as well. Um, so and the intent there is to potentially call on other functions or other services using the same event? Yeah, exactly. And so you can get one event and have multiple actions uh, be triggered off of that one event that through SNS. Right? And so Lambda calls SNS, SNS then calls another Lambda, right? and that, that second Lambda is, is what's doing the heavy lifting. Yeah, that, that's what's leveraging the Salesforce REST APIs to pull out the whole opportunity object that's what's grabbing that uh, attachment and pulling it out and writing it to S3. Excellent. Right. So what, what's, the, what's the need for a, a user to write all these events to S3? Uh, couple of similar questions on the, on the same line is, mm -hmm. is it mandatory to always write things to S3 or, or you just uh, decided to take that approach because that's what our customers are asking for. That's it really, you know, uh, ex exactly that, Jay. Um, you know, we're Amazon is a customer obsessed company, and and our customers are specifically asking us how do we get this data into S3, and the reason for that is it gives them the most flexibility. Of course, customers can write to any of our AWS services, whether that be an EBS volume, EF EFS, it could be. Uh, it could be Elasticsearch, right, or a, or one of our database uh, uh, offerings, right. right. So, uh, but S3 gives you the maximum flexibility in terms of then pushing it elsewhere if you want, and also it's, it acts as a archive, right, so that you That's can true. then um, lifecycle it into, say, something like Glacier, for example, using the S3 lifecycle policy and so on. Exactly.